Hey everyone, it's Ivan with kitbadger.com. Out here for another gear review, and today, talking watches. This one right here, which is my Diver One Automatic by Aries Watch Company. This watch is pretty awesome. In part, I gotta build it. If you saw my other video, I actually had the good opportunity, or good fortune rather, to have the opportunity to go out, meet up with Matt Graham over at Aries Watch Company, and actually build this thing which gave me a whole new appreciation for watches. Like, honestly, on a certain level, I'm like, oh, cool, a watch. And I know there's a bunch of people that are like total watch nerds and dive into all of it, all the different backstory and all these different things, movements, all that stuff. It wasn't me, but being able to actually go through and build this, that was an incredible experience. I mean, what goes in just even like, trying to put like the minute and hour hand like on the movement and stuff it's crazy and then depth testing it to a thousand meters i'm like man i hope this thing doesn't implode like boom done which it didn't but really cool experience and since then i've put in a lot of time with it and yeah it's been doing good for me I think honestly, kind of the coolest aspect of this watch is the fact it's a mission timer. So traditionally with dive watches, you can adjust the bezel, be like, cool, I'm hopping in the water now, move the bezel, and then you look down and the bezel is basically telling you how much time has elapsed, which if you just looked at your watch and took note of what time it was when you got in the water and looked down at your watch, you would also be able to tell how much time was elapsed. This kind of works differently in that rather than just showing elapsed time, which again, if you paid attention to the time to begin with, pretty easy to figure out, this very quickly gives you how much time to this moment in that it's a countdown timer, a mission timer. So if again, separate world than most people live in, but if you're gonna be on target and you have to be off target, by this time, you'll say, cool, like we need to be out of here in 40 minutes. Bam. Adjust that bezel. And at a glance, you can see when the minute hand gets there, like it's go time. Like that is the mark. And this was made not like concept and stuff, not in like the most conventional sense. Like it was made for people operating overseas where that stuff's critical and there's all kinds of other stressors like environmental factors all that stuff and what's really important is when it's time to go it's time to go and so being able to look down at something be like big hand at that triangle we're leaving that's kind of the that's the design and the end goal of it which i think is pretty neat from we'll say a historical factor like innovation side of it, like where that came from, but is there a practical side for it? I've found there to be. Well, personally, I no longer contract, go overseas, do any of that stuff anymore. There are definitely things that require timing in my life, even seemingly mundane stuff, whether it's like, hey, I'm gonna throw this on the trigger. Cool, how long do I want to be there for? Bam, glance at my watch, well, not quite yet. Glance down. Time to go turn it, turn it off, turn it up, whatever. Or my boys, dad, can we play on our tablets? Sure, 20 minutes. Go back to doing what I'm doing. Glance down, another minute. Glance down again, boys, time to turn that stuff off. Even on just a practical level, it's pretty awesome. It's basically just a countdown timer. I've been wearing this watch basically since I made it and it's been doing a great job for me. Well, they offer them in a couple different flavors, the Diver One, this one being automatic. They also have a quartz version and I was talking to Matt about it and I like how he put it. He said, quartz for precision, automatic for longevity in that my grandkid could pick this up out of a drawer somewhere in a box, move it, thing starts going. You pick up a quartz, battery's dead. About a 10 year battery life. And so with respect to ownership, there's a few different things going on. One, 
this is a automatic movement. So there's definitely some more input with respect to the user on this, as far as every few days have to adjust it because the time. Like it's not super precise like a quartz is. Conversely, you get a quartz in about every 10 years, basically have to send it back and get the battery replaced. Something kind of cool too is with respect to the quartz movement, when the battery starts getting low, it'll do like a double tick. So when you glance the second hand, it'll do this double tick and you're like, oh, my battery's getting low. But with respect to longevity and the fact that this is essentially heirloom at this point that I made myself, which is really cool, I definitely like the automatic. Right here on my Diver 1, again, mission timer, this bezel right here moves. And so if I want to say, hey, I need to get going in 20 minutes, move it to there. So the minute hand being on the 20, as it elapses, and it eventually gets to that triangle, again, really visible at night too. Bam, I know it's time to go. And something else cool is rather than like 60 clicks, there's 120. So you can actually set it for 30 second increments. Right here on this watch, this watch band is actually the like NATO style watch band from Prometheus Design Works, titanium hardware. They also offer these through Aries Watch Company. I've been using this one for a little while, which I'll speak to in a minute, but the watches actually come in these Pelican cases right here, Skiff Access Certification sticker. I'll speak to that in a moment as well, but inside this case, open it up. Here's the original band, which honestly, I actually really like these bands. Probably gonna swap it back in part just use case in how I wear my watch, which I'll go into more in a moment. But also inside here is this. This up here being my actual serial number for it. And this is a pretty cool kind of little essentially write up on, hey, this is how you take care of your watch. This is how you set it. Just different little things about it. And then also in here is the test certification, thousand meters which is crazy, so much pressure. And then underneath here, watches come with a cloth to basically wipe them off. This one, pretty sweet, Poppy's of War pattern. And then also a soft watch case if you wanna go ahead and throw it into your case. All together, pretty neat little setup, all kept here inside this Pelican case. So skiff and watch strap. Well, if you've never had a security clearance or unfamiliar with what a skiff is, it's basically a structure, building, whatever it may be that is secured and like it itself is like classified. So you can't bring electronics in there. You can't bring phones, smart watches, anything like that, but you can bring your mission timer in there. So one, you are not having to take things on and off, but two, you can actually make sure your time is lined up with the mission time and probably the people that are gonna be on comms and like overseeing things, going in to get briefed. Again, it basically goes back to the heritage of the original design and concept of this. With respect to watch bands. So this being a NATO strap from Prometheus Design Works, I like it, works pretty good. It's a NATO watch band strap. I think that's a generic term for them. And so it is made out of fabric, which is fine, except when it gets wet and then when it dries, kind of two different sizes a little bit. So it kind of wears itself in and takes a little bit of adjusting to figure out like where you want it to be. And then the other thing is you have this tail, which you can obviously just fold back Thanks for shaking off right there, Peanut. But you have this tail that folds back and keeps the strap like out of the way. Because otherwise, if you didn't, and you just ran the strap through here, now you have this big long strap, which is as designed because idea being, you can take this thing off, put your wetsuit on, and put this thing on, and then still have enough strap to where 
it's going to go over your wetsuit, however many mils thick that is, and you can still wear your watch. I don't really do a lot of diving. The one place that I have used that, like that feature we'll say, is actually been skiing. So lots of times I'll wear like my level seven from beyond, which is great, nice and warm, but it has like kind of these inner sleeve pieces that push up, keep all the wind out and everything like that. But if you try and wear your watch with it, it'll basically shove it back on your wrist and eventually your arm will hurt, like puts a bunch of stress on all your tendons. Not good. So without this strap, like with the regular strap, I'd find myself just taking the watch off, putting it in my pocket. With this, because of that added length, I can actually put it on over my coat and still have access, like be able to use my watch when I'm out skiing in the backcountry or on a mountain for that matter. Which again, six one way, half dozen the other, but lifestyle wise, honestly, that rubber strap, really comfortable and usually just works for me better. As far as going in and out of the water, whether it's swimming, showering, things like that, it doesn't ever change as far as the sizing of it. And the amount of time that I'm wearing that level seven to where I can't have a watch underneath, like when I'm wearing the Wild Things level seven jacket, it's not super constricting, so I can still wear it, just push it back if I need to see the time. So yeah, again, totally depends on use, but since I don't do a lot of diving, and that's really kind of my one use case with respect to that layering in the winter, honestly, probably go back to the rubber strap. Overall, I've been really stoked with this watch. It's, it's cool. Again, I've never really been into watches. This is my first kind of foray into like a nice watch. And the fact that it's a mission timer, I think is really cool. Not to mention just everything about kind of its genesis, like why it was made, like the idea of a mission timer and that practical functional application for me in my daily life, as far as like, cool, I need to do this in 20 minutes or hey, we're leaving in five minutes, boys, whatever it is, and being able to real quick, glance at it, all right, time to go. And again, I just think it's handy. I no longer have a like need for a mission timer or a watch I can go in and out of skiff with, but I still find value in it. And that is kind of one of those where like, hey, do you like watches? There's a lot of people that are just like, I just need to tell time. like. I have a Casio. Cool. Perfect. Tell us time. Or, hey, I need all of these metrics on my health. Okay, not this. Get a smartwatch. These I think are pretty neat though. And Aries as a company, it's pretty cool. Like it's a small company, a handful of people that actually work there. And every one of these is made by hand and to order. And they also come with like lifetime guarantee. And if you think about it, depending on your background, think about it like a piece of kit. Like this is something like it's part of your gear. And it's just that, like it's something you have with you. It has practical value. And on a certain level, you should probably maintain it too, whether it's occasionally sending in for service or whatever it may be. I, I like this thing and it has definitely gotten some personality as I've worn it. The sapphire lens on it, lens, I guess. I'm probably all off on my watch terminology. People will light me up. Super durable. I'm pretty impressed. I haven't like scratched or broke this thing with some of the stuff I've done. At the same time, this is all marred up and dinged. Red anodizing coming off, but yeah, like, giving it some personality. If you're interested in checking out one of the Diver Ones or one of their other watches, they actually came out with a field watch. Kind of neat, like a throwback to World War II. The doesn't have like a mission timer bezel or anything like that. And all your numbers are numbers. So like one through 12 rather than just three, six, nine. And yeah, kind of neat, like historical piece. But all this stuff can be found over at their website. There'll be a link down below. As far as the Diver One, the automatic, price-wise, you're looking at, I want to say 1850. 
and the quartz movement significantly less expensive i want to say 750. overall pretty neat again handmade watches here in the states and something i appreciate about the company is that they're big on making things here in the states to include working with Cerakote out of, I wanna say they're in like Bend, Oregon, and being able to bring that stateside too, as far as being able to do the illumination on the hands and face. Pretty cool across the board, but there'll be links down below if you wanna check that stuff out. And last but not least, if you appreciate my content, wanna support it, greatly appreciate it. One of the ways is supporting me directly through Patreon, little as a dollar a month, gets you early access to videos, some exclusive stuff, and if you have questions for me, happy to answer them over there where we have an active Discord. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.